cow. My eyepiece fogged up on me. Oh man. I don't know, I just blew it for you. He's down right through the ribs, the far back. I can't even yeah. see him, Tara. I don't even know if I'm getting him on film because the eyepiece was fogged up. Come here, give me the camera. I can't even see. I, the fo eyepiece fogged up on me and I'm just... It's a Kodak moment. It always tags me out for my caribou. Hey, cuz, I don't mean to interrupt, me, uh, interrupt you, but are, uh, are we uh, mounting this one? Yes, we are. How about the first one? Yes, we are. Oh, I hope Mama's sitting down when you tell her this. Uh, I might be working at 7-Eleven at night, but we're going to do it that way. Part-time job, mowing lawns. Well, there's Rogers, the second bull. Shot him on top of the mountain again. Double shovels, nice bez tines, nice fingers. Good job. So how many shots did it take you, Roger? Well... This was a one, a one-shotter, through the neck. You can see our meat hanging in the back there. There's his trout he caught. <laughs> caught the trout first and then the caribous. There's our meat house. Five bowls. Honey, plug the freezer in. <laughs> cape, 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 cape. Well, here's the horn count. There's Roger's second bull. Nice double shovel wide bull. There's his first one. Double shovel, real symmetrical. Here's my second bowl. Double shovel, my first one. Double shovel, very symmetrical. That's what we came for. There's Roger's two bowls. Get in there, Roger. How'd I do? You did good. Oh, Pretty yeah. light on your feet Start for an old back. fart. So, how was it? Great. Good, good and ask for more. So which was more fun, the first one or the second one? Second one. Second, second one. one. Just because your hunting partner was right there, wasn't yeah. he? And we got it all on video too, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Butthead. Alright guys, welcome to a new adventure. We are on the north slope of Alaska. We are packing up our gear. And we're getting ready to go into the abyss of the yep. so barren ground down. caribou hunt. Things yes. are about to get really, oh, really real. This will be the most 
Alaska. I don't know. Your guys' Alaska trip last year this was is, pretty Alaskan. This could be the kind of the wildest adventure we've done. So we're working uh, with the transporter. They're going to jet boat us way up the river. And then uh, we've got 10 days planned. Hopefully it's not going to take 10 days. And then we're going to float everything out. Potentially, with any luck, if it goes as planned, we're going to have a handful of caribou. We've got five tags. We're going to be joined by Luke from Weatherby and also Mac from Weatherby. Uh, Logie Bear is going to have a tag. I'm going to have a tag. Casey's going to have a tag. We have two wolf tags in camp as well. So uh, come along for a new adventure in Alaska. It's going to be awesome. to caribou camp we're not uh i mean we're kind of living large to be honest the transporter jet boat highly recommend that we are 20 plus miles up into the back barren grounds here these guys already have camp set logan and i were in the trailers feeling pretty optimistic he's got his bear spray on he's not messing around figure oh, that out dude. Me and uh, Luke were running through how fast it would take me to spray him in the face. What's your time? If he would have been a bear, he would have ate me. <laughs> I think the play might be here, and then it's... More just spray from the thing. Yeah, just spray from, spray from the holster. Oh. The good thing about out here... Yeah, at least you can see some stuff, huh? You have a while. You have a while to fumble around. And so it's, if you were like that, it'd be... I don't want to spray anybody in the face. <laughs> we'll work on this. That's a great place to have it though. Yeah, it's fantastic. That's an FHF. FHF makes both of those. But yeah, like Logan said, it's not like hunting in Idaho or Wyoming or Montana where you're walking through the, the pines thick, calling a bull, and all of a sudden bears on top of you or right there by you. At least out here, if you're paying attention, glass, and you'll be able to tell if there's some danger in the area and you can make the appropriate decisions from there. This is awesome, man. This is exactly what I pictured northern Alaska to look like. And usually that doesn't happen. Usually I build things up to be something a little better, a little bigger, and, but this is a, I told these guys on the way in here, I feel like I'm in a Gordon Eastman's video back in the 60s. Killing boots. We are day one in Alaska. It seems really unreal, like surreal to me right now. Uh, part of that is because we are literally in the middle of nowhere. The logistics to get up here is quite, quite daunting. Like airplane from Salt Lake to Seattle, Seattle to Fairbanks, and then a 12 hour drive, and then another hour boat ride. It might seem surreal too, because I'm running on one hour of sleep in the last like 36 hours. <laughs> but we are in it, win it, and it's day one. But guys, listen, we've said this a number of times. We'll say it again. I literally packed frozen food that I cooked at my house all the way up here to feed us because I hate dehydrated food that bad. Um, so we always say, just because you're, you're in the middle of Alaska, you don't have to eat like garbage. You can eat well, get the right equipment, do a little preparation, and uh, learn, you, learn you some recipes. So we're doing fajitas tonight. It's always a staple in our camps, fajitas. I felt like we needed to start this hunt off with some red meat in our bellies. Everyone's tired, we didn't get a lot of sleep. We drove 12 hours through the night. Um, today's not a great day to hunt caribou. They're not really moving right now is what we're, we're hearing. But uh, tomorrow the weather's supposed to change and it could change you know, their migration behaviors and is what we're hoping for. So it's literally only like 5.30. I think everyone's trying to get in bed before like seven. So we're just gonna cook up some fajitas, but we've been enjoying the hell out of ourselves. This is, you know, exactly what I pictured northern Alaska to look like. 
all the videos I've ever watched, all the articles I've ever read since I was a kid about caribou hunting in northern Alaska. This is exactly what I thought it would be. Mac, rating? One bite, everyone knows the rules. One through ten, no rookie scores. Five? I give the, uh, the Hush Tundra fajita five stars. Five out of ten? That's not that good. Oh, was it out of ten? Yeah, bro. All right, we'll give her nine. Looks good. She's nine. Sour cream. I told Logan to get it. Dang it. All just getting our packs ready. Uh, getting loaded up for the day. I think we'll spend most of the day up on that ridge. Glassing and maybe walking up it and seeing what we can find. We haven't been able to look over that ridge yet. We haven't been up there, so we don't know what lies beyond it. We're hoping it's a good big valley that we can see a long ways. And hopefully we see a bunch of caribou migrating this way towards us. And then we can go make a play on them. I've heard you don't want to chase caribou, or you really can't chase caribou. But what you can do is find them, get in front of them. And uh, that's what we're planning. But first day actually out caribou hunting, I'm pretty stoked. I've been just envisioning. We did see one cow this morning up on the hill, and we kind of lost her. But just envisioning seeing that first group of like legal bulls and uh, what that's going to look like. So hopefully we go experience that. But the mosquitoes are starting to come out. For whatever reason, they like to go right into the eyeball. Safety glasses. Give me a sit rep. How was the first force march to the tundra? You guys, <clears throat> we went, what would you say, 1.16? Yeah. 1.16 miles. I'd equate that to 2.6 miles in like Idaho. Um, it looks open and easy, like you're antelope hunting almost. <laughs> but if all this grass was gone and you could just see the actual topography of the ground, not fun. I got pretty sweaty pretty fast. It does help that we are like at sea level though, so you catch your breath fast. It's just, very unsure where you step, and that's uh, that's my hot take. You see my mohawk? How about that. <laughs> that's a great point. Yeah, we, 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 we just, covered. Hey, what a fun southeast and west. Course, though we're ready. We're in the right spot. For northern action. We are spotting caribou, guys. We uh, just saw a bunch out this way. There's some bulls for sure, but they're too far for us to go after. And I looked over this way, which is kind of what we're hoping kind of the corridor they're going to be working towards us. They're supposed to be, anyway. And I spotted one, single one, which is a little weird for caribou this time of year. But uh, it's just a cow, but it's a good sign they're moving. That's kind of been the problem we've heard is they haven't really been migrating yet, but today's definitely a lot cooler than it was yesterday. And it's just progressively supposed to get colder and colder. So tomorrow's supposed to be like freezing, maybe some snow is what we want so things are looking up and to be honest the bugs are not bad there's some gnats in the air i believe but no mosquitoes per se so pretty good day so far what is up ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to logan's backcountry bakery where we don't bake we review dehydrated food on today's episode we have ready wise adventure meals you notice there's the artwork right away we have macaroni and cheese and it looks as though we are in the plains of Africa with some Mac what are these Kudu. Impala, I believe. Impalas comes with two jokes and a riddle you guys ready for the riddle riddle me this see how good this riddle is from the beginning of eternity to the end of time and space to the beginning of every end and the end of every place what am I I'm nope you guys think on that leave it in the comments below if you get an answer, shut, shout it out. But we got mac and cheese today, ladies and gentlemen. This one calls for 16 ounces of water, which is quite a bit. And when I opened the bag at first, I did catch a stench of feet, I would say. I would say foot smell for sure. Um, and the noodles looked really tiny. I added my boiling water, and if you could just get a shot in there, Brian, those noodles really grew up. Uh, Casey, we're trying to film a TV show here. You see those swollen nudes? Nudes be swollen. Anyways, 
We're in the back country of Alaska um, hunting caribou, but thought I'd leave my hi hiatus of Logan's back country bakery to bring you guys another episode. So here we go. Uh, we have Ready Wise Adventure Meals mac and cheese. Mmm. Mmm. That one's pretty weak. I'm gonna give that a 3.2. Ooh. 3 2. Uh, lack of flavor, noodles cooked through, but there's just no flavor there. And I have this small stench of feet in the back of my nose. <laughs> oh, that's a tough one. I, I had high hopes for the mac and cheese. 3 2, that's a rating. Logan's Backcountry Bakery. Um, I have a few more dehydrated meals back at camp, so, but thanks for tuning in. 3.2, Ready Wise Meals, mac and cheese. I think, I think Logan's Backcountry Bakery is a fraud because he rates these stuff low, but then he just eats it all. I don't know. The we have our first critic. When he took that first bite, was not good. It was I think like he's playing to the cam it I think he's playing it up to the camera. Would you like a bite? I would. Bring it over here. So that's what he was fishing for. He's not <laughs> that even. Was a, that was a rookie <laughs> score. That's what he. Oh, that was a rookie score. So you're going out of ten. Give it a try. Tell me what your this thoughts is are. Zero through ten. Here we go. Guest appearance, Casey Levere. I'm kind of an expert when it comes to oh. mac and cheese because expert. My kids eat it every day. Out of ten. Out of ten. That's that's the rating system. <laughs> yeah. And he said that I had a rookie score. Two point one. Oh, big big expert. That is cardboard with government cheese on top of it. <laughs> <laughs> those are rookie numbers. Gotta put those numbers <laughs> on. Now it's so bad that I want to like try it. Try it. Go. <laughs> oh, we got a continuation, folks. We got Luke. You're we up got next. Mac, whose first I name should, is yeah. in the title I of the recipe. I should be an expert recipe. on this. And I'm Italian, so I know pasta. Big Italian meal here. Dude, that tastes the same as Kraft mac and cheese. Oh, oh. I'm, no, I don't think Kraft mac and cheese is good. Got, no, it's real. I, I don't think Kraft mac and cheese is good. That's the qualifier. There. That is a 3.2 all day. I gotta say, the noodles are substantial. Like, they look big. They're pretty, they look good. Color's right. It's like the texture, it hits your tongue, you're like, oh yeah. And you're waiting for the flavor to come, and it doesn't. Mm -mm. Maybe if you dumped a few packets of salt, yeah. it might do something, but. Three, three and a mm -hmm. half packets of salt. So there you have it, folks. Mixed reviews across the board. Casey immediately spat his out. Max said comparable to Kraft. Dude, that tastes the same as Kraft mac and cheese. Which I'm gonna disagree with. No way. Um, Luke tasted it and thought the same as me. 3.2, that's the final rating. I, I'm gonna say it's oh, not lower. bad, it's just not good. That yeah. Just popped out. <laughs> we had salt. Three packs of salt, three and a half packs of salt. Might have raised it to a four or five. You have that on your phone too? Of course I do. I knew this song was gonna come in necessity. <laughs> yeah, we're, I think uh, Casey should give the update. Here's, here's your is. update. <laughs> here's my score, just like a uh, Logan's Backcountry Pantry. I give this game a 1.2, it's <laughs> stupid. <laughs> hey guys, just so you know, I'm wrecking shop over here, thanks to all my grandmother's teachings. Logan's good at Why didn't she teach him too? Casey wasn't a good listener. I never play cards with Grandma. How many you got? I'm playing Rummy in the backcountry right now. Brian's behind the camera right now, but he's been behind the glass while we kind of dork around. I mean, who's working harder? <laughs> I'm still behind. You guys You're are... only behind me by 10 points. Oh, Listen, wow. I'm in it to beat Logan. Suck it! <laughs> Bam! Things just changed. Casey's favorite game is Rummy now. <laughs> he got Back the to... fours again at the 15! <laughs> Positive 10. <laughs> Plays three fours down. Suck it! Plus 10. This radiation. Guys, is... we have been up here on this hill for most of the day. I'll go. Well, it's my turn. Cheater. <laughs> Negative right. 40 points. Write it down. So, what caribou hunting is, you're not going to walk miles and miles through this stuff. You basically get set up on a high point and you glass all day because they're migrating. We're hoping they come through here. And uh, it just hasn't started happening. We've seen a ton of caribou. So, it's the same caribou. So, we're hoping tomorrow the weather changes, or even tonight it could, they could start pushing through. We did see bulls through. this morning. Yeah. First bulls, but they were far. 
so we moved to where we could see them, and now we haven't now we haven't seen them. <laughs> <laughs> and I wonder why. Mm. But no, we stop every about what twenty minutes in glass. I just saw a new one. Yep. Anyway, that's just kind of the strategy: is just get up on a high point and glass, 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 and hope they come towards you. But I'm getting Pass my butt time. kicked at Rummy right now. Yeah, well, you know that's fine. I too have something important to contribute. That was it. I don't have anything to fall down. What? I think he ducked. I think he went underneath the ridge. Sup, fellers. Fellas. Ladies. Uh, still up here on the knob, glass, and, and uh, Mac just saw a bull. It's the first bull we've seen since this morning. I would assume that probably was part of the group of bulls we spotted this morning. Um, that's a good sign. Uh, we're trying to figure out if he's... Kind of headed from like right to left a little bit. The thing is with these caribou is you can't, you're not going to ever chase them down because they can move. But what you can do is try to get in front of them and hopefully they continue on that path. So we're trying to figure out if he's headed kind of towards us or towards the river or where and uh, make a play on him. We just lost him for a second. It doesn't look like there's a lot of topography out here, but there's just enough of this that they can get behind something you'll lose them for a little bit bit but hopefully it pops back out it's crazy is it's seven o'clock p.m and uh typically you'd be like we're gonna run out of daylight like you're gonna hunt until what 12 30 up here there's 20 hours of shootable light yeah so right now which is wild i mean yeah it's been a wild first day of caribou hunting that's for sure we, we've seen quite a few not a ton i thought most of the caribou we've seen have been in singles i always thought they'd be like in small groups we did see a group this morning it was like five or six bulls but seen a bunch of cows that kind of just been by themselves which is weird that's what this bull is definitely uh by himself right now if there's one there's got to be more all right ladies and gents it's golden hour um we found a legal bull well mac did we've been watching him and he got just a little bit too close so we're gonna go in after him um, he's a younger bull, but he's a legal bull, and he gets me excited, so I raised my hand, and now I'm going to be packing the gun. We're going to go see how close we can get, and, uh, see what happens. Pretty exciting stuff, guys. We're pretty stoked. First day, and definitely saw quite a few caribou. Uh, not a ton, but I saw definitely a legal bull that we're going after now, so we, uh, Logan got excited, I was like, I'd shoot that bull. No one else really spoke up, so we're going after him. Gonna let Logie take first crack. Hopefully, fill the first tag tonight. About 800 yards. Getting close. We'll go ahead and put some shells in the magazine. I don't know what you're gonna keep. Keep pushing towards it. I was born ready. We didn't get him. Right. Well, as Logan said, we didn't get him. Uh, I think we got the last range we had was 800 yards and it felt like we were just gonna meet him on top of this ridge. Logan turned the scope to four power, ready for a close encounter. And then he wasn't anywhere to be found. So we walked up this gradual hill 
and uh, I don't know, a thousand plus yards opposite direction of where we came from. He uh, crept over a hill, skylined himself, and we saw it was a bull, and then he disappeared over the other side. Sorry, dude. Yeah. We still don't have him. Hey, we just got back to camp. It's this stuff, this tussocks, is that what they would call it? It's tough to walk on. We probably did, I don't know, maybe three, 4.2 miles. But this stuff makes it, I feel like we, we did probably five, to five and a half to six. Just because, man, your ankles do this. It's like, Logan said it best, it's like walking through about six inches of snow. But uh, 4.2 miles, we saw some caribou. Uh, we almost got one killed, or almost got a shot. So that's all we can ask for. Um, the storm's supposed to roll in tonight, which we're hoping it's gonna change some things. There should be more caribou coming in, but we're gonna cook some dinner, have some laughs. Uh, we're gonna be joined tonight by a musk ox. It's literally 80 yards from our camp right now. Looks like a grizzly bear. No, But I mean, we're getting the full Alaskan experience so far. You to... look pretty Alaska. And this is the full Alaska experience, if you guys didn't know. Oh, well, I thought it was a kid show. I guess I didn't throw that out. <laughs> My chest hair. <laughs> All right, ladies and gents, as you know, our famous phrase, you do not, what is our famous phrase? Just because you are in the back country doesn't mean you can't eat like a king. And tonight, following last night's fajita night, we have homemade chili that Casey's beautiful wife, Kaylee, made and Casey put into a Ziploc. I have a beautiful wife, but I made the chili. Oh, I thought you said she made it. She made the soup that we're gonna eat tomorrow oh, night. Oh, so Casey made the chili. I love you, babe. You are beautiful. Um, it's actually her recipe, though. I just got a... Uh, Logan's learning how to use a knife. Jigsaw puzzle of blades here. <laughs> there she is. Yeah, so what, what he did was, uh, yeah, uh, put them in Ziplocs, um, and then vacuum sealed the Ziplocs, which was very smart, and then froze them. So tonight, we are gonna have a hot bowl of chili. We have some cheese, and we're not gonna have to eat dehydrated meals tonight. You just have to heat this up, and we'll be eating good. And you have two of these? Oh, the second one's not as big, so. This is a big one. <laughs> That's a long way. <laughs> I thought you were gonna do an intro, and okay. then I was gonna, I was yeah. gonna, I was gonna right. enter. Yeah. Okay, you ready? Here you go. So the chili has been heated. I think we're about ready. And Mac is up first. I would feel more. Let me. Let me you can go this. for it, champ. Here we go. However, it gets in the bowl. That's how I want you to do it. Thank you. What a <laughs> king size serving. We got plenty of chili, so I wish we had a spoon. Didn't you get a sweet spoon? The trick so with the spatula is just the... go fast. Come back for seconds when you're ready. All right. I'm very excited about this. Casey was kind enough to provide us with some cheese. This is the good stuff. Oh, look at me. Look at me. Like Gordon Ramsay up in here. It's pretty fire. Put some solid chili, Casey. Oh yeah. Casey, man, way to put the work in before the hunt. Do we have a Make spoon? some food, freeze it. Just... I so good. Like Case crushed this. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, you did. Got a little, little bit of heat to it. Not much. Yeah, it's really delicious. It's just the right. I gotta say, it, any hunting camp, frankly, pre-cooked meals are so clutch because you mm. come back after a long day and you're so tired. Last thing you want to do is have to cook up a meal. If you've watched our videos over the years, between my wife Corey and Casey, we've typically had a lot of pre-cooked meals. They're delicious, hot. They are not Mountain House. 